there's a lot of texts out there that haven't been studied. And I just just say two quick things to finish that off. So one of my projects, I want to when I finish with the Ricardo, I'll start on the Gundarisa, right? And that's gonna take that's gonna take forever. I want to write this short text, What March Wrote and When. And I'll put that on, on, on the other blog. And I want to be to write something that will be useful to people who will start to read Capital so they can see exactly what it is they're reading and how it fits in to Marx's economic writings. And most of what Marx wrote about economics, I think, is concentrated into a very, very intense period of kind of 1857 to 1867, where you wrote basically everything, right? So to how to, some kind of roadmap for people to work their way through those writings that, that will show how those writings fit together. The stuff I'm talking about, Volume 2, is everybody knows that there's controversy in relation to Volume 3 and what Engels did to the manuscript that Marx left. And books and books have been written about Volume 3 and the relationship between Marx's original manuscript and Engels' final text that Engels changed with Marx thought and blah, blah, blah. Again, Volume 2, Volume two, the forgotten volume, right? If you read the preface to Engels' preface to, to Volume 2, Engels puts together volume. He's working with eight different manuscripts written over a period of about 15 years. Right? And nobody has written anything about how these different manuscripts fit together. Not all of these manuscripts have been published. A lot of these man what has been published is still in German in, 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 in the Mega 2. The stuff from Volume 2 has not even been published yet. I think the what I've been saying in our conversation today, the importance of the reproduction schemes, for example, Marx, Marx wrote version after version after version after version of the reproduction schemes because I think, in a sense, that was the pinnacle of, of, of capital and possibly, in a sense, the, the order that Marx actually published, Volume 2, Volume 3, that really Volume 3, the content of Volume 3, in a sense, maybe is a road on the way to Volume 2. And I think if Marx had had more time to work through all this material, maybe he would have published what we consider Volume 3 in the form of Volume 2 and Volume 2 in the form of Volume 3. And that's what he was working on when he died, right? So that's my, that's my, that's my roadmap for the, basically the rest of my life. There's one quick thing I want to say, which is a compliment to the blog. When I realized, when you told me that you wanted to interview me, I, I, I went back and I listened to past episodes of, and there's lots of interesting material. Uh, I think you do an excellent job, and I think you should you know, more power to your elbow on that. I, I, I was out shopping. I listen to these things when I'm, when I'm out shopping. I was out shopping, and I, I'd finished listening to something on Radio 4. Uh, I was looking for something on the phone to listen to while I was shopping just before Christmas. And it's, I, I get, on, the, on the blog, the 18th Brumaire podcasts on your blog are absolutely fantastic. Right? It's one of the best things I've ever listened to ever on the radio. I've been listening to BBC Radio for since I was about six years old. And it's one of the best things I've ever listened to ever. Right? I'm I was involved in a pe bunch of people I came across on Facebook and been in a capital reading group with them. Uh, they've just read Volume Three of Capital, and they read Volume Three. They're going to start reading the Gundarisa in the new year. I'll participate in that. But they they read volumes two and three of, of Capital in kind of six months. And I think that, you know, it's, and the more people who read Capital and talk about it, the better. But it's just like way too fast for somebody reading that text. I mean, I said I've read volumes two, one, two, and three of Capital. has taken me. I'm not proud of it, but I mean, it's just like just an indication of the, the scale of the project. It's taken me like 15, 16 years. And I think I'm... I read, my intention now is, is to read the Grundrisa. These people are going to read the Grundrisa next year, but they're going to do it like, kind of, probably going to do it like 30 or 40 pages a week or something like that. Now, mm -hmm. just as a, as a shout out to the world, right? If anybody, this, this 18th Brumaire podcast, which I recommend to everybody right, who listens to this, is basically a group of people who know what they're talking about, sitting down and reading the 18th Brumaire Marxist account of, the aftermath of the the mid nineteenth century revolutions in France. It's this people. There's a group of people who know what they are talking about, right? Who sit down and discuss it line by line, what Marx actually says and what it means. Now that is the way. That to me is a Marx reading group. You know, if anybody out there wants to sit down and discuss the Grundrisse line by line with me and what exactly it means, I'd be absolutely delighted. I'm using your 18th Premier podcasts as a model for that.
Well, th- 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 thanks very much for that compliment. It's it's uh, it's uh, very much appreciated. I would say though, like the the uh, the Brumaire took. I'm just trying to see how many episodes the Brumaire took. I think we got to oh. twenty twenty nine episodes or something like that. It's only about one hundred and forty pages. So, the, if you were to do it with the uh, the well, ten years. Effect, it, it'll be like about six thousand episodes. Be Plus, careful what you sign up for. <laughs> oh no, no, it's. I mean, you know, this. I mean, it took me. It took me fifteen years to read the rebalance of capital. When I'm, you know, I'm quite happy to read the Gundu in ten years. I mean, the whole thing about, you know, I, I get the sense, and the, this, this, the, these, these Facebook people are really good people. They're really nice people, but they're they're impatient to finish. And at some point, you have to, you know, you have to focus on the process and not and not the. You have to focus on the journey and not and not the d- destination. Sometimes. And, and it is, and I think the more you read it, but you but you, you you have to read it carefully and systematically. No, reading the Grundrisse like that's going to take ten years. You know, I think. right? If anybody's up for it, I'm, I'm, I am. Uh, well, there's a proposition. Maybe maybe we should do it on the podcast here. Read the Grundrisse, and uh, I don't know. Would you be up for it? I, I'm up for it. So absolutely, certainly up for it. Yeah. I've read bits. I mean, it'll be the first time for me to read the Grundrisse systematically. Yeah, I haven't read no, the Grundrisse. Familiar. Let me think about that. Ed. No, seriously, yeah, no, yeah. I'd be, I'd be well up to it. I mean, a kind of, you know, I mean, you know, you, you don't need to start these things with necessarily the intention to finish it. I think if you, I mean, it, it's doing it is what's important, and see how far you get. It's not capital reading groups routinely. Capital reading groups start and they never get to the end, but it doesn't right. mean it's a failure. What's done counts, right? So you know, if you're up, I'm, I'm up for it. If you are, but I think yeah, about it, let cause... me think about it. No, seriously, let me think about that. That's because I'm reading. We're getting to the end of another reading group, and I kind of, I like to, I'd like to to do another one, and I'm kind of wondering what to do. But um, let me let me think about it. The, the other thing is um, a friend of mine who I, I did a Marxist reading group here, just with capital, with a few people living in the neighbourhoods, and we got nearly to the end of volume one and petered out. We never finished the last thirty pages, but people ran out of steam. But one of them was listening to uh, he was listening to a reading group or like a, essentially a podcast like that on on Ulysses and he mm. like by this Irish author mm. JP Dunleavy I think was doing it, and he was saying it's brilliant it's brilliant and I was like he's dead and he was like what <laughs> like the guy died halfway through you know doing the Ulysses podcast <laughs> and mm. my, my mate was really depressed because he was enjoying it so much but like you know that's it like these things you know how many. How how long is how many pages in the Grundrisse? Is it like nine hundred or something like that? Around that, yeah, eight hundred, nine hundred, something like that. Yeah. yeah because yeah. I don't think you could do any more than ten pages in an episode. No, like no, no, no. And it'd be it'd be about ninety. I'd reckon ninety to hundred. Let me think about that. I think I'd be up for that. Like, see if I can get some people that would be interested. The other thing is like getting people that'd be good to talk as well. You know. The, uh, the, I mean, the critical it. thing. Yeah, the critical thing with the eighteen three mills. I try to emphasize is. It's not just. It's not just these. I don't know who, who, who those people are, but they're they're people who know what they're talking about, and they're they're, they're, they're quite entertaining people. And you're and you're good self as well. They're quite entertaining people, but they're I mean they're the people who know, who, who who know what they're talking about. You know, so I think that's yeah yeah yeah. I'm I'm up for it. If anybody fancies it. Right, sure. Look, Ed, I've, we've got loads there. Thanks for coming on. And um... let me give you let me give you one one quick suggestion for something that you might yeah. something that's occurred to me that I would be very interested in. But I mean, I'm not. I don't think I'm capable of doing it. But the recently there was a project to, and it's supposed to be coming out. See the light of day fairly soon. A new translation of Volume One. The two American academics are doing a new translation. Paul, it's Paul somebody and Paul somebody. I can't remember what they're called now. But okay. Obviously, Paul and Paul don't. Have. Really, Google it. You'll find it. I'll send you a link afterward. But it, I was. I've always been. I'm, I mean, as you read Capital, the, the question of translation is obviously important because you're dealing with text and then people translate it, and you've got ex, two extant translations of Volume One, and I find it useful to compare the two. I always been like. The job of translating something like that has got to be it's got a hell of a job. It must be astonishing. I'd be really into the, 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 the translation now that everybody uses of only one is Ben Folks, right? And I don't know anything about Ben Folks, otherwise I've Googled him and he, he, he seems to have a bit of a speciality in German history. But he's, he's the guy who translated volume one. He's also Marx's. 1864 65 manuscript, which is where Ingalls gets like 90% of volume three from, that's been translated into English by Ben Fox, right? And that exists as that exists in English. So that's useful if you're reading volume three. 
And Ben Fox, I see, has translated there's bits and pieces in the 1861-1863 manuscript and the collected works he's translated. I'd be really interested in talking to him and just yeah. asking him, like, how did he get involved? I mean, I don't know how old he is now because that was the 1970s, but he's the 1864-65 the manuscript came out a couple of years ago, so he's still active. Do you know what I mean? It'd be really interesting. So if you're fishing around for people to interview, try to interview yeah. him and ask him stuff about that. I'd be fascinated about how he got involved in that, what difficulties he's had, how he's, his translation strategies and so on. Because it's one of the issues that you get when you read different translators or across these texts, the way that right. Marx uses certain terms and they get translated different ways. Just an idea that right. it's interesting. Absolutely fascinated. Because one thing we one thing we came across is like we think there's been like a problem in mistranslating. I can't remember. Was it in the Brumaire we came across it? What yeah, it was, hangover between, you know. between social and societal. Yes, 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 yes. yes right, yes, and yes. that's a really fundamental uh, kind of word to get wrong. I found the guy here. It's a uh, Paul Wright, writer and Paul North. That's the one. Yes, now, Paul Wright and Paul North. It's interesting. If you want, uh, Kleiman did a a talk to Yale online about value theory. It's like mm. a one to two hour talk, like a symposium to invite him. And it was Paul. It was your man, Paul North, who was asking the questions and mediating the thing. So that's interesting that he's in touch with Kleiman. Well, that's brilliant. Look, Ed, thanks okay, very much. I'm done. You're, 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 the, the, uh, you're done now. The, uh, the blog is brilliant. It's really like, it, it's really a, a great resource. Like I'm surprised there's not more people looking at it. I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll start. I, I'll give you a, a lot of more shout out if I can on the podcast, because I've been using it for years on and off, like, you know, you know, it's brilliant. Yeah, very good. You know. Good, thank you. And and the podcast is the podcast is good as well, eh? So keep that going.